Well, hello there and welcome. So we are back to Advent of Code, day 15, uh, to take a stab at part two. <clears throat> so previously I did this messy and kind of brute forcey solution uh, for part one, which works, but if we run it uh, in release mode, release and time how, lo how long it takes to complete, we see that, well, we, we get the answer and it takes like a third of a second to run. And this is doing a very brute force solution to get the, uh, the answer. So day 15 of Advent of Code is about these um, beacon exclusion zones where you have a, a bunch of sensors and their nearest beacons and you want to like you have some exclusion zones for, for each sensor. So if you haven't read, uh, like if you haven't checked part one, I, like this video <laughs> won't make much, much sense, but I want to continue on. Um, <clears throat> so my, my solution was basically to a very brute force thingy. So for instance, in this sample, um, this sample input where they ask you to, to tell how many um, positions cannot be occupied by a, by a beacon in line 10, uh, we're basically counting all the possible positions and seeing if any, like if for each position, if any sensor is uh, close to that position, that means like the, the exclusion zone for that um, sensor, which basically is a, a rhombus of this shape, is rhombus actually a, the word that I'm, if I can, okay, yes, I think it is, uh, <laughs> rhombus shape, yeah, I don't know if there is a, um, a more common name for this shape, yeah, cool, okay, it's, it's a rhombus, fine. Um, but yeah, this is a very brute force solution because we are checking the condition for each um, position and in this sample input is, this is fine, but in the actual input the positions of these things are on the millions, like, um, and we are asked to, to count how many um, tiles or I, I don't know how this, this is called. Um, how many positions cannot contain a beacon in the line two million, uh, like y equals two million, like that horizontal line. So we are iterating over like millions of elements and for each element we are iterating over each sensor. So it's, you know, expectable that this is very slow. And for part two, we need to basically um, find which single position is not excluded by any beacon uh, in a 4 million by 4 million square. So it's huge. And if we're going to take like a third of a second for each row, and then we are going to ch check the 4 million rows, we are going to be waiting for like more than a million seconds, which is a very long time. So um, we shouldn't do that. And we should probably find a better way to do part one uh, to maybe apply that same idea for part two. So that's what I wanted to do. Now, I have been thinking a little bit about this. Actually, um, we can refresh our memories of how these things look. So this is code that I commented out to print the grid. Now, we cannot print the actual grid for the actual input, but we can do the thing for the sample input. So if we change this file, input file to be the sample thing, and we run, uh, well, we can just do, I guess we can just do cargo run here. Uh, well, I, I didn't run day 15, I have all the outputs, but for day 15, this is the shape of, uh, of this map. And so you can kind of see the shape of the different rhombuses uh, and how they overlap. And here's the single position that, um, is not covered by any rhombus and 
Well, here we are basically iterating from minus 10 to 30, but for the sample solution, we are asked to, uh, to take in consideration like a square of 20, like from zero to 20. So it's a square somewhere here that only this uh, position is um, not covered by a beacon, by a sensor, I mean. So I was wondering, maybe we could check the shape of the actual input. So if we go back to the actual input, but of course this thing is ginormous. So we should scale it down. So maybe when we are parsing, <laughs> we, can, we can maybe cheese it here and do something like, okay, we have these numbers. Let's map all of these numbers to them divided by a thousand, maybe? And uh, this thing is um, an unknown. Why don't you know? Well, I guess we could say uh, you are an i32. And probably a thousand is still um, too low of a, of a scaling. So let, but let's run it here in this console. Um, Cargo run, uh, day 15, it's gonna print, why is it printing this? Oh, okay, because we haven't changed the coordinates. Mm hmm, so what square should we, <laughs> like what scaling factor should we use here? So let's use, let's extract this thing to a, um, Well, we can make it a constant, const scale, uh, it's going to be i32, let's start with 1000, um, and so here for the actual input, um, oopsie, I guess we are checking from minus 1 million to uh, 10 million, so we can do something similar. Um, you can stop using this and use these numbers. And here we could go, I guess, from uh, min x. Well, actually, we could have this min x and min y and divide them by the scale factor. And the I don't care about this or the, or the answer that you give us. Uh, I just want to know to see the shape of this thing. So let's see how it runs. Uh, <clears throat> what? Oh, I screwed this thing up. Um, have I just goofed? Okay, we have to change this, of course. So here we should go from uh, min x, sure, to uh, max x. I don't know why I did one to be inclusive and the other one not to, but that's fine. Let's go to the other terminal, run day 15, and Uh, look at that, That's uh, we are printing a lot of lines and these are long lines of 10,000 or more. That did, this looks neat. <laughs> Why is that happening? I have no idea, but um, let's increase this uh, scaling factor by 10 and make it 10,000 and let's go here do this and this is still too big but if we make the font size very small well this is still a bit big oh but we can see a little bit of the shapes here so that's neat um, I think we, if we scale this a little bit more maybe 20 uh, thousand times we could get something <laughs> Look at that. Okay, uh, it's a bit out of out of the um, x coordinates, it seems. 
and it's a bit too too uh, too long in the y coordinates. So let's uh, decrease this. Of course, here this doesn't make sense to do this. Um, let's duplicate uh, this kind of lines. Let's do. Um, we have min x and min uh, y, <coughs> and min x should be a bit lower. Let's go from this max x. I guess it's fine. It could be lower. Let's go to eight eight million. We're just eyeballing these things. Uh, min y, I think, is fine. No, it's actually not fine. It has to be a bit less. So let's go um, this and max y is a bit too long. Let's make it five million. And now this should be min y and max y. And let's draw and see how it looks now. Oh, look at this! <laughs> Very nice. So we have a general idea of the shape of this input. So it seems like all of the beacons exclusion zone or sensor exclusion zones touch each other. Like there are no separate floating islands. That is nice. Um, but if we want to do like a scan line, um, well, one thing that, that's interesting, I guess, Hmm. Is that well somewhere here is the like the rectangle of four million times uh, four million like in the middle we, because we know that only one single point of that rectangle is um, not excluded by a sensor and in this middle region you know there are no um, how do you say, like, convex zones um, or concave? Con convex is like this, I guess, and concave is like, like, like it has a hole. Um, so yeah, it's all filled up. And the thing that we get asked for part one is at the line two million, which is right in the center of that four, four million four, by four million square. So we could actually do a, a much simpler thing of asking like what is the minimum x and the maximum x of um, all the uh, rhombuses, you know, like we can make like the intersection of each of these uh, rhombuses shapes and that line and ask the minimum and the maximum and just count, like, make the, the difference between those two and, and, and we should have the count for part one, I, I guess. For part two, I think it, it would be a bit more difficult. Like, we want to find that single thing um, that's skipping. Um, hmm. Let's think. Um, Hmm. How could we make that? So, but I know, don't know. I, I, at least for part one, like, w but we have to think of a solution for part one that also works for part two because that's what you know. We already have an answer for part one, but part two requires that you know the check. If we're going to check each line, it should be much much faster. So I was thinking of maybe more general solutions like. One approach could be to like calculate the intersections of all these uh, rhombuses, like maybe draw each rhombus as a uh, four point polygon and then make the intersections of all those polygons and like have this line in a way, like the perimeter. And we, we would have like a, a single long line and then a little line that is like just the, that point in somewhere in here that is the single point that is not covered by, um, by these uh, sensors. But like doing that kind of general purpose thing with uh, polygons is, I have no idea how, how to even approach that. I would probably have to read a lot of theory about like, math and polygons. Uh, so that seems hard. Mm. So 
So I think we could try to, like here we brought brute forced this thing going for each position, for each X position, and we checked millions of them, and it was fine. It, it runs in under a second. So if we can find like a very, very fast solution for a single line, then we can brute force the solution for the four million rows and try that. So, okay, let's sketch it out. We have a general idea of the shape of this thing. So that was good. Um, this is fine, I guess. And we don't need to do the scaling, so let's remove this scale factor. Let's remove this mapping. And let's remove well, all of these scaling things. Fine. Um, okay. So, how do we approach part one in a more efficient way? So, I guess let's think about a single rhombus and this line that we had to check this y. I guess we can call it, well, that's just line x, uh, line y. Uh, but no, I, I don't care about that. Uh, let's not think about naming for now. Let's concentrate on what we want to compute. So, let's think about a single rhombus. So, let's write, uh, draw a rhombus of diameter, um, how do we call this thing? A distance to the beacon of two. So this would be the center of the sensor. And it would be something like this. Okay. And <clears throat> let's say that we want to calculate the intersection of this rhombus for like this, this line. Um, which would be, I guess, line four, if you think. Yes, I'm using one index here, because I can. So, um, I think we can totally... First of all, this line could maybe not intersect with the rhombus if the distance from, like, four to the coordinates of this sensor, which would be three, like the difference of those two, if that is bigger than the distance from this sensor to its beacon, then they don't intersect and that's like we can skip that uh, rhombus. Um, then also, um, let's think, well, if the distance is less than, than, than that. Here, for instance, for this line, the distance between this line and this center is one. And so we can take the X coordinates and I think add, so we have the distance of, of, I don't know how to call this, like the power of this sensor, which goes up to two. So we can do two minus one, which is one is the difference between this line and this. And that gives us one, so we can start from here and do one to each side. And this would be the beginning and this would be the end. And I think if we go here, the, the distance is two. So they are just equal and it works the same way. So yeah, I think that's more or less the, the general case. So in that sense, we can get like slices, the beginning and end of each rhombus for that line. And then we can probably uh, either make the intersections of those segments or maybe just sort them like from, you know, sort, it by, sort them by where they start and go iterating over them and count. I think we can probably do something like that. So, um, hmm, exclude the positions count. So this is for part one. Um, how are we going to do this? Let's Let's think about an alternative solution for this. Um, so let's say let's um, segments, I don't know how to call this. We're gonna make this a vector of uh, two points, I get, no, not two points, of 
beginning and end, so it's going to be, I know that this is the same as a point, but this is not a, a, an x, y uh, coordinate. So we're going to get all of the sensors, iterate them over them, then um, take the distance of these sensors to, let's say, let's see, let's do a filter map. Uh, of this sensor and finally we are going to collect into that vector so how are we going to filter? I want to use filter map because the ones that are uh, outside uh, out of like don't in intersect with this line we shouldn't consider them um, so let's first make uh, let's I don't know distance D be the um, do I have to make the distance? No, I just need to have um, this y minus the sensor position y. Uh, there is no y actually. This is a tool, so it's coordinate one. I should probably refactor that, but let's keep going. So I need to have this two and take the absolute. <laughs> I have my two cats sleeping on the on the desk and they, they take a lot of space. Um, okay, so we have this. What do we want to ask? So if this let's first filter. Um, this is the distance from so what in, in our example, if we have here, this is this distance from from here to the sensor. So if this distance is greater than uh, sensor distance uh, beacon distance, then we will return none here. This is like this is outside of reach. Otherwise, we're gonna have. Uh, Let's. We are going to. We, we know that the um, distance is less than or equal to the beacon distance. So we're going to say uh, sensor uh, beacon distance minus this distance. And that's going to be like how much we have to add to each side. So. I don't know how to call this. Let's say let's uh, whatever a, <laughs> and then we are going to return the segment, which should be uh, the x coordinates of this sensor. So I guess we can say sensor uh, position x would be this and. this minus um, a and then this same thing plus a so let's this is very unreadable i know plus a okay and of course this shouldn't be just a tuple this should be some tuple so the filter works okay so let's actually print out these segments i'm interested in this uh, print ln. So uh, debug print this thing. And so many symbols to do a uh, debug print. I should probably have like a editor macro for that. So let's run. Uh, I don't know what I want to do. Let's run release this day 15. Actually, we are using the 2 million uh, example here. But that's fine. These are segments. How do they look? I don't know. They, they look kind of legit, I guess. Oh, look at this. There's a uh, minus seven, uh, 700,000. That's interesting. So, hmm. This is kind of ugly to read. Let's say something like let's uh, sensor. We're going to extract here the beacon position or the beacon distance 
and the position. Um, can we actually like destructure this position into uh, sensor X and sensor Y? I wonder. Make this the sensor. It doesn't like this, so. Um, we also have to ignore everything else. Oh, look at that. It, it seems like this works. Uh, that was actually a little bit of intuitive syntax. <laughs> Very nice. So we are going to dereference this. And here we can ask for this would be SY. And <clears throat> this would be the beacon distance. And this also would be beacon distance. And what else we can, yeah, this would be uh, SX, okay. So that should make it a little bit easier to read. Uh, we have this segments. Now we want to count, um, basically count along these segments. So one, way to do this would be to try to find all the intersection of this, not the intersection, the union of these segments. But I think that's kind of complicated. I think we can chase it and make it simpler by simply sorting them. Uh, sort by key. And we're gonna have a sensor. No, actually this is a segment. So each segment will have a begin and an end or start and an end and we're going to sort by the start start x and end x let's name things as clear as possible so to do that we are going to have to make this mutable fine and you don't like this because uh, we can just dereference this very good Okay, so if we sort these things, what do we get? We get something like this, which is fine. It goes up to almost 4 million. Interesting. So, if this is, like I guess for part one, for part one, we can actually um just let's think let's think actually huh. hmm. <laughs> so these are the segments of the different Rhombuses. For part one, I think we can just get the first element of this uh, sorted segment and the beginning of that and the end of the last one and just make the difference and call it a day. And also, well, we have to take into account like subtract the, the position of uh, beacons at that, uh, at that position. Like there are some beacons at, at, at this position, and I guess this is, yeah, this is the same beacon here. Okay, yeah, it appears in four sensors. So for, some, for four sensors, this beacon is the closest one, that's fine. And I wonder, yeah, there are other repeated things. Good. Um, okay. So yeah, for part one, that would be enough, I think. We can call these things uh, sorted segments. Fine. And uh, yeah, I'm just thinking. Yeah, let's 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 try it out. Actually, uh, we can have. Um, hmm. Let's print sorted segments. The first one and the first 
uh, like the beginning of that, which should be this, uh, or actually the end. So sorted segments access. I think I cannot access like by negative arrays like this. Uh, but we have the end minus the beginning. Yeah, no, this is not valid. Um, so I guess we can say sorted segments len minus one, beautiful. And what does this give us? Uh, well, this is not the answer actually, but it's not too far off. Huh. We are missing something here. Hmm. Are there more? Like we had this drawing, and I do wonder. Well, where is this line of um, two million in here? But could there be like other like floating things that we are not seeing here? Maybe there are, uh, because I don't understand like such a big difference between these two hmm I do wonder mm. I'm tempted to try to print the same thing but no we didn't see any sort of like loading things before so I doubt that they exist <laughs> uh, what are we not accounting for here in these segments? So these segments, I think, should be, since they are in the middle of the square of 4 million by 4 million, they should... All, ah, okay, 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 there's, there's a problem here, which is not... The end of the last one is not necessarily the uh, maximum position of these segments, like... Um, yeah, no, uh, because a segment could start at the previous position. We, we are only sorting by the start X of each segment. And we, a segment could have like a shorter, uh, like a lower start X than another one. But the other one, um, but like end later. So it sort of includes the other one. Um, so I guess we, let's even like not care about sorting these things. We could actually do something like, uh, call this thing segments again. And instead of doing this, let's try to just get the um, iter. Um, let's map to uh, the first coordinate. And then find the minimum of that, just unwrap like crazy, and do the second thing. I'm saying coordinate there, but it's not a coordinate, it's the uh, beginning and end of each segment, and this would be the maximum. Uh, yeah, let's run this. And now I think they should be the same number or have a difference of one. Uh, well, they actually are the same number, except for the sign. Ah, of course, uh, because we should get the maximum minus the minimum. That makes more sense. Um, right? And we are getting the same number suspiciously, because I think we should <laughs> Like, we shouldn't. Um, so let's say something starts at uh, 1 and goes up to 5. Um, it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It should, you know, have a difference of 5. But if you do 5 minus 1, you get 4. So you have to add 1, actually, to, uh, to this calculation. But then there will be different numbers because uh, we are not accounting for the beacon that appears there. Um, but okay, this seems like a 
solution for part one, like a possible solution. Um, and we are trusting that the shape of this thing is like, doesn't have any concavity in this uh, line of um, 2000, which is fine, I guess. Uh, let's, yeah. Hmm. Okay, fine. Uh, so we can go with this uh, approach, I think. Uh, I don't know if we will need to sort these things. So let's actually use this for part one. Um, we can forget about this brute forcing thing. Bye-bye. We can forget about this. Bye-bye. We can... Even min and max x, I think, are not used here. So, yeah, this, this thing. Uh, let's... Blah, blah, blah. It's gonna be this thing. Sure. But we have to subtract uh, the positions of any beacons that are there. So I guess we could do something. Yeah, we don't need this. Um, sensor segment, blah, blah, blah. Let's do something like let's uh, a beacon. Positions. Make it a hash set because we want Unix here. Hash set of whatever is going to be um, uh, what sensors iterate over this and map and get well s <laughs> uh, screw formatting s uh, beacon position and collect into this hash map. So this is a hash map of what? Of points. Awesome. So now we can mm, we can do something like um, positions count, which is the answer to part one. Subtract from this Or uh, let's have this first and say let beacons at y uh, count will be beacon positions. Uh, iterate over those and filter the ones um, where we will have x and y, the ones where well, this would be beacon X and beacon Y <laughs> and where beacon Y is equal to this uh, Y variable that we care about, the line of uh, two, 2 million and of course here these are references so we can add the reference here good and we're gonna count this and we are gonna subtract this from here Beacon at y beacons at y count, uh, and this is a u size. So let's convert this as um, i thirty two. Okay, and now the answer should be the same that we submitted. So let's check that. Seven to nine. Oh, yeah, seven to nine. So it's another way of calculating that. But I guess we can do a build release and uh, time uh, target release advent of code blah 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 day fifteen. So okay, now it's taking like two milliseconds. It's, it's nothing. It's probably the, the startup time. So this is way better it seems like this approach like at least for part one is instant instantaneous so that's awesome um, we can now try to approach part two with this improved uh, solution uh, 
let's add these changes because it's just way faster. How can we do something similar to this but for part two? Hmm. So let's have maybe a function to to be this do this like segments extraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So we are going to do the same thing, like get the segments and then see where uh, I guess we can do something like um, we cannot do something as uh, like as directed as this. I think that we are going to need to iterate the segments, but that's fine. Um, yeah, so let's let's do this. Extract into function, sure. So let's say uh, sensors. Um, Exclusion segments. Yeah. Uh, row segments. <laughs> that is good. So sensors is going to be this. It doesn't need to be a vector. We can take a, a slice here. Y is correct. And we can have, we can sort these things. So let's do this thing. Because I think we are going to need them sorted for part two. Um, let's mute this thing. Sure. We can call this uh, start x and this just to, to give things names uh, and x. Um, hmm. This variable sx is a bit confusing, but it, that is sensor x. Uh, and I guess we can probably inline these things. Uh, let's see how it looks inlined. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, so we have extracted these things, uh, this, this function. Here we also have the decompositions. Um, this is good, yeah. For part two, we don't care, I think, about the beacon positions, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, we, we shouldn't care about that. Mm, okay, so let's delete this and think about part two. Uh, these are the variables for part one. Let's leave it like, no, not for part one, I mean for the sample inputs. Let's leave them like that. So for part two, what are we going to do? Hmm. Let's think. We're gonna surely iterate from zero to four million. That is the brute force part. <laughs> so let's say, uh, we are going to try to find what the actual position, right, of like x, y position. Um, okay, let's let's write it in a very imperative way, and then we can think about, um, you know, like a iterator-based way or something like that. But we are going to go for that. We can forget about this uh, y for now. We we can shadow. It. Shadow it. We're probably going to have something like let's um, 
distress signal uh, beacon position and we're going to assign it when we find it inside of this loop. So we are going to brute force this thing. For each of these uh, y, we're going to get the segments. So let's say let segments be this uh, segment sensors exclusion, exclusion row row segments <laughs> for yeah these sensors and uh, this y variable very good and these are sorted by the first um, the the first position uh, how do you call it like the beginning of each segment right okay so what we're going to do we are going to iterate some let's uh, mutable x let's say um, hmm. how are we going to do this so, okay let's start at zero and let's say we're going to iterate the sensors for each uh, sensor s in sensors we are going to go like advance the x um, by each sense uh, no this is this should be segments actually and we can probably structure this into start x and end x of each segment so we're going to be iterating each and advancing it x till the end of each uh, segment until we find like that, that the next segment doesn't touch uh, the current one in some way so how do we do that <clears throat> Hmm. So, um, first we, we have to see if the first uh, segment, like thinking about this is, is a bit abstract and, and I'm having trouble, <laughs> trouble thinking about this. Um, So first, I guess we can skip any. So if the segment uh, end is less than zero, we can just break. Uh, no, continue. Uh, like no need to check for those ones. Um, yeah, I guess we can clamp these segments to. Um, to zero to four million, I guess, to make our lives easier. Um, hmm. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem, right? Um, any segment that is clamped to that. Let's say um, clamp zero to four million. I don't know if this makes any sense. <laughs> uh, and the ends, let's clamp it too. Okay. And we are gonna then uh, start uh, like advance the x right so if the uh, end or i guess no the start of this segment is um, x plus one it means that we have sort of skipped uh, like 
there's a gap, I think. <laughs> oh no, actually, hmm. The next segment could, could start just where the previous one um, ended. Oh, this is harder than I thought. <laughs> I'm wondering if, if, if I, instead of having this thing, maybe it should return like non-overlapping segments. Maybe it should. Mm -hmm. But okay, let's think about, let's try to be naive and see what happens. So if the start of this segment is at x plus one, I think that in this case, this is the case that we want. And we can say something like this is sum uh, x, y, I think. Or maybe not, because if, if this th these ranges are inclusive, and this x, um, because otherwise we and here I guess we we want to do this and break. Uh, otherwise we are going to do x update the x to be uh, end x of this segment. Um, so skipping one is not just asking this plus one, I think it is plus two, if it makes any sense. Uh, and let's do something like, mm, this unwrap here. And I have a posi positon, the position and why don't you like about this? Does not implement, okay, yeah, sure. Let's debug print it. I don't think that this is going to work and also it's gonna be very, very slow. I think this should be x plus one probably. And you don't like that because this is not mutable, of course. All right, so you can do this. Let's try to use the um, the sample uh, data, so the width of this rectangle. Well, this is actually double than than this. So I guess we can we can call this thing uh, line y, and uh, this would also be line y. And here, you can say line, line y uh, times two. And we are actually going to go, we have to include this limit here. That is very good. Uh, we can actually maybe say, let's, uh, I don't know how to call this, with this. Yeah. Okay. I have no idea what I'm doing <laughs> at this point. Let's go to the sample input and let's see what happens when we uh, run this. Uh, yeah, run in release mode. I don't care. We got a point 1720. 20 is a bit suspicious. It should have been 14. <laughs> 11. So it should be at line 11. So maybe at line 11, 11 we can print what these segments are and try to understand if what we did makes any sense at all, which I think it doesn't. So um, if y is 11, let's uh, print line this debug segments. I don't know why we are, we are building a release. So okay, here the segments go from minus three to three, 
Then, oh, look at this, from two to two. So here we had, we should have already um, updated the x to three, but then this ends before. So we are going to be going back, I think. So I think we should say something here like uh, x max and x um, and then where is the position so uh, x y11 and x14 so okay here we have a segment that goes from 11 to 13 and then the one that goes from 15 to 25 but we also have another another one that goes from three okay so then x should be this and the start of the next one should be 15 so the condition I think should be found so let's see if the change that we just did uh, takes care of that okay <laughs> look at that 14 11 uh, that's somewhat promising oh man I'm feeling a bit uh, <laughs> I'm a bit excited. Should I try this? One thing that I'm that I'm a bit suspicious about is what happens if we find more than one of these. So uh, let's say something like if uh, distressing blah blah, blah uh, is some then. We're finding two, and we shouldn't do this. Um, two points with um, outside exclusion zone found, <laughs> and we can print this too, I guess. If let some brief position, we can say something like this. Brief position and this. Uh, yeah. But actually. And do that. Let's just inline this here. Uh, why do you care? Okay, yeah, debug print. Fine. All right. We are not finding two points for the sample. That's that's good. Let's try the actual input. And yeah, go to the actual input. I think this is going to take a freaking while, so let's do something else also. Uh, if um, y mod, uh, uh, this is 4 million, so let's say every 100,000, let's just print. Uh, a single dot. Now this equals zero. Prints uh, a dot string, I guess. And I'm so bad at this. Okay. Okay, in debug mode, it is taking forever. Let's run in release. Whoa, okay. <laughs> uh, those are some dots. And this is uh, an answer. And we had to do something about this. So the tuning frequency. Um, did this actually panic for some reason? 
it ended with an error, I think, right? Actually, wait, we are having this noise here. Let's remove it. Straight again. I don't understand what happened there. Uh, no, it ended without errors. Uh, nice. So we had to go get those two numbers and multiply them or something. The x coordinate by 4 million and then adding its uh, y coordinates. Okay. So. Mm, yeah, let's do if um, let so this beacon uh, beacon x and beacon y. Uh, if there is some, whoops. I'm wondering though, when we are finding something, like it didn't take that long to to run, right? And besides that many points, so I don't know. There is something that I didn't understand of, of, of this and the four million. Like we should should have seen. Well, no, forty. And yes, this looks like forty dots. Um, fine. So. Let's say let blah blah or else uh, panic and say uh, distress signal beacon not found. We sh should find it. Um, you don't like this because, well, we are not assigning anything. This should be the distress, blah, blah, blah. And then here, uh, well, let's calculate this thing, which I don't know what this was called, the tuning frequency. So let's say, let's tuning frequency. Let's actually write when C be the beacon x multiplied by 4 million which is this like width thing that I don't know if I named correctly um, then adding its y so beacon y and let's print the tuning frequency here Let's run. It does take a little bit to run, but we do have an answer. Let's submit it. And it's a huge number. I have no idea. Uh, that's not the right answer. Damn it. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. This was my guess. Okay. So, let's print this position and have an idea of what we are dealing with. We are printing this position at two million and three million something. All right. Um, hmm. I think one possible error from this is that we could have. So let's, let's think about this condition here. Mm -hmm. um, we are not finding two of this though. So if there is another one, like... It might be in the same line on this same beacon y 
Did I also, maybe I, I did confuse the tuning frequency calculation, so let's return to day 15 and see um, the tuning frequency, blah, blah, blah. So, which I'm multiplying this x coordinate by 4, 4 million, right? Yeah, 4 million. And then I, it's y coordinates okay yes i think this is correct we are doing x and y here mm -hmm. so there's something probably wrong i think about how we are checking this so we are advancing through each segment but what happens if like the current x is gonna be the maximum end that we uh, end of the segment that we have seen, maybe the next one starts two after that. But does that mean that? Um, let's think of an example. Like let's say we have a list of segments. I don't know, two, five, and then it comes something like seven, uh, ten. Um, actually, we're also getting the maximum of those. So I guess we could have something like two, five, then uh, three, four. Right, this won't increase the x, so that is fine. Uh, this is basically contained within this, and then when this one is not covered, like the position six is not covered, but could it be covered by? No, it couldn't be covered by something before because the end should have been covering it and it should already be updated hmm interesting um, very interesting if we go back to the to the sample inputs uh, fourteen eleven Okay, yes. The stress beacon is uh, this thing. 55 million and 11. Do we get that? Actually, we don't. So let's hard code that 4 million in here because the tuning frequency like we shouldn't be using this with thingy fifty six million and eleven okay so yeah we are finding one position and then we are calculating the the tuning frequency um but it's not right. Um, where did we mess up? I guess we could try to, when we find this thing, to print the segments. So, uh, print LM, uh, segments, and let's do this, and have the segments we can avoid printing progress because it's not so terribly uh, slow this thing and with this we can go to the full input running release mode uh, what the hell we are uh, borrow of moved value segments oh we are consuming this 
So ah, we're consuming this here, which is fine, I guess. Um, we don't need, need it for anything else, but I guess we can eat for it without consuming. And in that case, we have to do something like this, which is not very fun, but okay. Um, let's go again. Okay, so these are the segments. And the point that we found is at 2,655,411. Okay, so let's see. 655,410. This ends right before. And this 655,412 starts afterwards. Then we have another at 412, which I guess it's probably another beacon that touched that, uh, or that another s uh, sensor that detected this. I don't know, this seems a bit suspicious, but. Okay, 412. Uh, 410, and also 410 here. Hmm. Um, why is the if the start is x plus two? So we are detecting it here, and I mean, it does look like suspiciously good uh, candidate. Eight ninety eight, and okay. And then we have, oh, look at this, wait. I don't know, this is our print. Okay, sorry, I, I got confused there. Hmm. Interesting. Where are we messing up? So it is not the line, the road that we care about. I guess we could assert here in the end, uh, assert that x is uh, this width, like it got till the end, right? We we should. We should probably check that. Oh, because look at this. This doesn't end before 4 million. Huh. Oh no, it does. There is this one. So it should go up to there. Huh. Okay. Okay, okay. Um. So let's run it with those assertions and see if something explodes. Oh yes, something panicked at a certain fail, blah, blah, blah. Okay, interesting. So this assertion is failing. Can we print a message with this assertion? X wasn't true. <laughs> okay, yes, and we can debug print something so uh, what's happening here? X only got to um, this. We should be updating this X, shouldn't we? Wait, I, I went. Ah, uh, no, sorry. This is <laughs> this is not in the right place. Um, this is should be here, and I think now it probably won't fail. Um, no, it didn't. Okay, <laughs> I was putting the assert in the in the wrong position. So okay, we are completing all the other rows. So there's only one point that we are finding, and we are getting this um, frequency. I don't know how tuning frequency. 
Yeah. Wait, it should be... Wait, 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 wait. Are we wrapping around here? Yes, I think we are wrapping around. Oh man, this, this is so stupid. <laughs> yes, okay. Ah, oh, man. Uh, so, we are dealing with 32-bit numbers and all of these positions can go into 32-bit numbers, no problem. The problem is that if we multiply something around 2 million by 4 million, suddenly that doesn't fit in a 32-bit number. It only fits in a 34-bit number. So, uh, let's compare this to... Uh, I a 64 bit number and have this also as I64 <laughs> print the result now. So it's the same code, it's just that yeah, it should have been a much bigger number. Damn it. Submit. Yes. <laughs> oh Jesus, I was debugging in completely the wrong place. Like this code, although it is not the most readable thing or whatever, it, it the logic was um, sort of correct, I guess. So, <laughs> uh, yes, we do need this. And I'm wondering if maybe it would make more sense to use 64-bit numbers for everything. So let's do a quick thing of... Uh, timing this, let's build release and time it. It is taking some time, uh, 700 milliseconds around that sign. This is a very good candidate for optimization. Ah, okay, um, if we change everything from i32 I32 here, all of this, all of this, and this also, yeah, all of the I32s, I guess. Let's change them to I64. <clears throat> and then we don't need these casts here. So what happens if we build and run now, the calculations should give the same numbers. So it does look like the same numbers. And it took actually less time. <laughs> I64, like 64 bit integers are seemingly faster. Who would have thought? Actually, it doesn't, it's not surprising because my computer is a 64 bit um, processor. So can this be inferred? Uh, no. Okay. Fine. Uh, all right. So, yes, we can maybe omit this. Yes. Okay. Very good. So, we got the right answer. We don't need to print this. We have the tuning frequency. And that is all too good. We can also maybe not care about the case where we are, where we will find two, because now that we know that the logic is correct somehow, um, and we can consume these segments here, move them out of the vector. What if we run now? We don't have to be checking for things. That runs in the same time, I think, yeah. That is a bit less code, that is fine. We can get rid of the sample size uh, thing. And we can also maybe hard code this width. So yeah, let's move it down uh, here, here. Yes, and let's make it just hard-coded uh, 4 million, yeah. Yeah, okay. The clamping of this thing is something that I don't know if we need to do. 
But let's keep running this. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Very, very nice. Let's add these changes. And mm, parsing a distance and blah, blah, blah. Let's organize this code a little bit. Let's move the type definitions just outside of this run thing. Good. Let's also move this uh, down. Yeah, okay. I like to sort functions like in the order that you kind of see them in the main thing, like go top down basically, um, from like the top level to the details below. Okay, so mm -hmm. control this thing. We can set line y count. This becomes position. Now we are only using this here, and I'm wondering if we can maybe change the shape of some things here. Um, and instead of saying parse sensors, uh, we'll have the sensors. Uh, we are doing something pretty simple here. We have sensors and beacons. Uh, no, I think this is fine. Yeah, beacon positions. Let's add a comment here of why we need this in a hash set. So, uh, beacons, a beacon can be detected uh, by multiple sensors. So, yeah. We keep unique positions. Uh, we want unique positions. Okay, then we have this. Fine. Spread the positions count. Um, <laughs> um, could maybe try to extract this thing. This is the part one solution. Um, solution. Yes, I think that we can. We can. We can probably also ex, um, express this in terms of iterators, probably. Although I don't know if it's gonna be uh, easier to to follow. So, oh, here we can break actually. Yeah, so if we run now, this might be faster. And for many reasons. Interesting. Uh, so I guess we are iterating almost everything. Very interesting. Um, okay, is there something else that I want to improve pr from this? Because it's a bit late and maybe I am making Little sense, so let's drink some very cold mate. <laughs> My cats are well asleep, asleep in the desk. All right. 
<clears throat> so one thing that I, I want to see is uh, whether this clamping is necessary. So if we start at zero and we um, get to uh, we have some prints about the segments, right? So yeah, segments do look something like this. I'm wondering if we just remove the clamping, like if it still gives the same answer. Like no thinking required, and yes, it looks like it does. It doesn't change the runtime at all. Uh, I guess most of the runtime will be consumed by doing, you know, expensive computations like for each uh, point or for each row, I guess. Um, hmm. Okay. But we don't need the clamping, so we don't need to do that. And I guess we can inline this with. Very good. Um, we didn't even in line. Well, no, the segments we can keep. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sort of like this, I think. Um, this is a reasonable solution, I guess, for part one and two. Um, one thing that maybe I'm not a huge fan of, well, this is part one computation. Let's maybe, maybe keep things a bit bunched together for part one. Uh, or maybe extract this thing into into functions and be oh look at this <laughs> we moved here from uh, somewhere here to this thing very interesting uh, so we were in the waterfall and now we have gone through some un underground passages nice um, okay so this is the row where how many positions cannot contain a beacon so let's extract all of this, uh, all of this, I guess, into um, a function to, and call it something like uh, excluded positions count we can have this yeah we're just gonna return this thing um, we are gonna need the sensors of course and we are gonna need a coordinate y and we are gonna well, let's call this thing line way. And let's add the return type. Very good. Cannot uh, add line. <laughs> yeah, we can do this. Okay. And Let's call this um, something like end and call this something like start. Um, <laughs> not the previous code, this, this thing. So uh, we have the Because that uh, line y count is this, this is fine. 
then um, let's have this as i60. Now this is fine. Also like this. But let's uh, instead of having the segment like this, let's say starts and ends, and keep the end and. Here we're gonna do the same but the other way around. We have we can have starts and the ends, and we are gonna keep the start okay. And we can call this max end and min start. Note uh, assumes no holes in this. Uh, row instead of calling this thing line, let's call it row. Uh, mm. We can probably call this um, with um, this function. Exclude the positions with our let. Um, actually, let's just let's have it into a variable here, and so that the computation for part one. Uh, is then before the computation for part two. At row, uh, we're going to pass the sensors and the row, let's hard code it here. All right, uh, let's do positions count. So, yeah, that makes sense. Mm, that makes sense. Let's add these changes. Is there anything else that we can do? Well, let's try... I have a couple of ideas. First, let's try to see if expressing this as some kind of um, iterator does make any sense. Mm. Probably not, right? Um, I don't think it will. Let's see. If we say something like this, uh, what are we going to do? Like to, we're going to basically. Um, map to we're going to basically filter map I think uh, filter map and this will be the y coordinates and we are going to get um, This break condition is basically um, should basically the return of this uh, and some well actually this is what we're going to return return some otherwise it's going to be none. And from this, we are just going to uh, take one, or actually get the first, or just find, how, how do we, well actually instead of filter map, we can just say find. Oh no, because we need the mapping, I guess. Um, yeah, okay. Isn't there like a first or last? The last element. 
next is currently what I want. So this should be stress beacon blah blah position. And we want to expect this to be one. Um, yeah, we can do something like this. Uh huh. Yeah. Does this work? And that's the stress blah blah beacon X. Um, we can probably not do the else here and just not have the sum because we are already expecting this. Uh, good. Does this still work? It does, it seems. Um, is it even faster? I don't know if it's an optical illusion, but or it's just noise. Oh, look at that, the first 400 milliseconds. So it's learning, the computer is learning to, to run faster. <laughs> um, look at that, okay. Yeah, yeah, I sort of like this mm, iterator based solution. Isn't there something like, is there a filter map like find map or, oh, there's a find map. Place this function to the elements of iterator and returns the first non, non none results. That's exactly what I want. I don't need to have a next. How about this? Mm -hmm. Still the same uh, answer, so that's good. And I, today I learned about find map. Very nice. Okay. This is a good solution, I think. Uh, let's commit. So, uh, day 15, part 2, solution. And what else did I want to try? So, there is something that is not a very important optimization, but, but I just want to, uh, to see, basically, if any of these sensors is contained entirely like the sensor and its like beacon exclusion zone uh, is contained entirely within another sensor. So we can see if that's the case. So let's say for S in sensors, uh, uh, iterator, do. So we are going to check um, if any other sensor contains this sensor uh, totally. So if um, let's say uh, yeah, if sensors iterator any S and how do we ask if it contains? So we can say something like, uh, when does a sensor contain another sensor? Let's think. Uh, let's draw a sensor again. We're going to have something like this and uh, this. And uh, let's actually copy this, something like this. OK. So imagine that we have another sensor, um, I don't know, over here, this would be uh, another sensor, and this would be like radius zero, let's say, like nothing extends after this. So it's contained because it is a distance two from this, and so it's include like this plus its power is included within this. If the start of uh, center of these sensors would be here and its uh, exclusion zone, let's mark it with another character like dollar signs, would, uh, would be one and it's like this. So we can say that if the distance between the two sensors plus the 
uh, beacon distance of this one, all of that is less than the beacon distance of the first one, then they are like fully contained. So, um, let's see if um, the dist let's say uh, let sensors distance uh, be the distance between s uh, position and sensor uh, position now this this variable names is are terrible let's call it these things uh, sensor a and sensor b which are not totally better but maybe better than just sensor and s uh, okay so we want to check if sensor a is contained within sensor b so um, yeah let's say we have this sensor distance so if sensors uh, distance plus the sensor a uh, beacon distance is less than or equal to the uh, sensor b uh, beacon distance Mm. I guess what we what I want to do is something like for sensor B in sensors iterator again. Let's have two nested for loops and that's fine. Pencil n uh, sensor and we're gonna print the sensor A is contained in sensor B and of course these things are debug I think yeah so we can uh, print them as debug so sensor A and sensor B okay let's see if there are some sensors contained within others oh look at that there are a few it seems Let's actually uh, write some lines. Uh, print a len, just separator. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Oh no, wait. Uh, I'm probably printing uh, the same sensor, right? Um, <laughs> sensor at this position. And the composition is containing a sensor position. Yes, same thing. It seems. Yeah, it is the same sensor. So uh, we have to like not iterate over the same sensor. So um, let's say enumerates and enumerates. Uh, I and j and so if i is different than j and blah blah blah, blah then do that okay <laughs> so okay there are uh, there are three sensors that are totally contained within another one and that's interesting, I think, because if we remove those three th sensors from this input of 30, so it's just 3% of sensors, it's not too much. Um, but we, we could remove them completely and it wouldn't hurt, I think. Um, so can we do that? Um, Yeah, I, I'm just curious to see if we remove these sensors, um, if it will be good. 
So, um, it's kind of a mess, this code, but say let's uh, sensors to remove. Uh, it's just a vector. And we are gonna well, let's make it immutable. Okay, instead of printing this, let's well, we can print, uh, but then we can also sensors uh, to remove, push the sense the index i, I guess and break because we already know that i is fully contained within another one and we can say sensors is there some remove function yes okay uh, we're gonna gonna say for i in sensors to remove uh, iter reverse, so we are going to iterate this in reverse order, very important to do it in reverse order because if we, like this is a vector of indices and imagine if the indices are, I don't know, 2 and 4, if we remove the 2 first then it's going to shift everything uh, 1 to the beginning and then you're going to be screwed um, like the 4 is going to be invalid, but we can, rem like if we do it in reverse order, we can remove the 4 first. It's going to shift every everything after the 4, uh, but then we can remove the 2 and, and that's nice. That's okay. So we can do this removal here. Um, and i is not of uh, the referencing the what? Okay, yes, we need to dereference this thing. And now it's complaining about something else, so... Uh, mute sensors, yes, of course. So I wonder if we do this now, does it change anything? The solutions seem to be somewhere um, in the same ballpark before, so let's, uh, oops, I sent the kill signal, but let's look, yeah, this was my answer, so it seems that, like, the answer is the same, yeah, two, the two answers are the same, but we are running somewhat faster, it's probably, no, it's not making a huge difference, like, yeah, this seems like an improvement, but I don't think it is worth it. Um, like I think it's some code for a very negligible difference. We should think of a better like algorithmic improvement for this, which I think there probably are some things that we could do. Um, but I don't want to think much more today. So is this the only change that I have here? Yes, I can totally discard this and probably call it a day for this puzzle. So okay, we, we did find, managed to find the two solutions. It was pretty hard this one, or at least it was pretty hard for me. Um, I'm interested in trying to, to, to make this, you know, a, a better algorithm because this is a bit of brute forcing uh, approach. I think that there are some approaches that we could try like, uh, did I have a, a drawing of? Okay, let, let's let's think of something in the air. If we have a beacon like this, and and there is another like, you know, in order for for there to be for the second part, you know, to be only one point that is not excluded by other beacons, it means that the, it is on the boundary of at least four beacons, I think. So I think we can probably find uh, two beacons that have like a boundary of size one, like are separated only by, by one, 
and then two others that are also separated by one and like intersect those lines or something like that and you know have a much direct solution than this very brute force thingy and yeah something like that i think could work but i have to think about it and it's 2, 2 a.m already and i don't have any more uh, <laughs> brain cell power to think about abstract math and geometry thing is so let's call it the day and I'm happy to have found the two solutions so I think that's it for today and if you have been thanks for watching see you next time bye bye